2023.5 is on its way out. And that's a really huge deal because there's some cool features that are coming in this new version of On One. And I haven't tried any of these things yet but I do look forward to getting that release sometime in the month of June. Now, before we jump too far into the content, if you don't have On One Photo Raw and you're looking to get it, I think now is a really good time. If you wanna save some money when you pick it up, think about using the link in the description box below. It's an affiliate link, you get a discount and I get a small commission. It's a win-win all around. And let's go ahead and dive into some of the content here. So here we are on the, uh, the On One YouTube page. And as you can see, I've already looked through all of the uh, upcoming features, the sneak peeks, if you will. So we're going to start with my absolute favorite, which is the curves. The very first thing here, you, you can see that the curves module looks very, very different. And I'm thankful for the user interface that they've changed this to uh, because I think this is going to be more value added. Now, I do kind of think that the little dots or the nodes, if you will, I think those might be a little large for the grid squares behind it. But I think that that is me nitpicking. There's a lot of updated features when it comes to the curves module. The first thing, if you look here at the top, you can see that it has a picker tool. Now this is similar to what we've had in Lightroom. And this is just one of those ways that on one is becoming that much more uh, of a competitor to replacing Lightroom, if that's something you're looking to do. Now, I think you can replace Lightroom with On One, as long as you're willing to forego certain things and have a little bit more flexibility. But now that the Curves module has this picker tool, that's a huge deal. Now, when we move down to the actual user interface here, or the graphical interface, I already mentioned the grids and the nodes, but behind here you have a histogram now and that histogram is actually really good because sometimes you're making modifications to an image especially when you're trying to pull your black point in or your white point in uh, you're not quite sure how that's interacting with your overall photo and it just makes it a lot easier for you to go and find on the histogram where those tonal ranges are and then just start manipulating them and also having the picker tool is going to help you really pinpoint those i think this is going to be a, a fantastic tool just for learning photography learning how pixels work learning how light works and uh, when you capture an image looking at your settings and the the area that you're photographing in, having this available is just gonna help you out that much more because when you want to correct the tone, you can click on this little picker tool and you can select any area on your image and it's gonna place a node there. Now, if you drag up, it's going to increase the exposure uh, and if you drag down, it's going to decrease the exposure for that specific tonal range. You can also use this to protect tones in your image, and I'll show how to do that uh, once I get my hands on the tool and I get familiar with how it works inside of On One. So one of the other features that I'm actually pretty excited for is these color overlays inside of each one of the channels. Now, uh, we've always had the RGB capability, but you didn't know what you were really modifying, and this is a very visual representation. So as I pull up, because I'm on the red channel here, or Dan's on the red channel here. If you pull up, you're gonna be adding red into your image, and then you'll just choose the tonal value where you want that red to go. But what's really cool is you get to see the overlay of the opposite of the red channel, which the opposite of red would be cyan, and then the opposite of green would be magenta, and then the opposite of yellow or I'm sorry, blue would be yellow. Um, that's also known as CMY, and then we say K just for the black. It's very popular for printing things, but I'll explain that in a later video. All in all, I am super excited, and I didn't even mention you can now delete nodes. So if you make an adjustment and you're like, you know what, I don't want that anymore, you can just click on it and delete it instead of having to hit Command-Z or Control-Z a bunch of times. Like, 
That is a feature I've been asking for over on the Photo Raw project, and now it's here. The next features are really focused on masking, which I think is amazing uh, because the AI mask capability, hate it or love it, it's here to stay in photography, uh, at least for the very foreseeable future. And I've said this many of times to people that this isn't going to replace you as a photographer. It's a tool that's going to help you speed up your workflow and get selections a lot faster. Uh, even if they're not the most accurate at first, it's easier to clean up a mask, in my opinion, at least, than it is to try and fine tune while you're creating. So if I can get something that allows me to select a majority of what I'm selecting first, then I think that that's value added. With that said, I realize I don't have a lot of content around me using the AI masking, uh, most of which is because I don't mask the entire subject in a lot of cases. I mask only a portion of the subject, so the brush or one of the radial adjustments works the best for my version of photo editing. Um, but for you know the times when i need to select a larger portion of the image then these ai masking tools are absolutely uh i think essential and here's the deal we've already had in our ai masking all of these other options but now they're adding in a feature for background and foreground now if you look at the photo here Obviously, the man on the horse is in the foreground, and then you have the background of the mountain. So it's very, very distinct. What I would like to know and what I'm planning on trying out is if your foreground and background are not very well defined, right? Like we can tell he's not right in front of this mountain, and I think AI is going to be able to figure that out. Uh, but what happens if you're in a room and you're shooting at a high uh, f-stop, so maybe f8 or f11 for whatever reason, and you have a lot of depth of field, uh, how is it going to distinguish the foreground from the background um, when there's not that much fall off from the focal plane, if, if that makes sense? Now, if it doesn't, then disregard everything that I just said. But nonetheless, if you do have a photo, what you can do is select the background and you can see it selects pretty much everything. Now, in this case, it's also selecting what I would consider to be the foreground uh, because what I think on one is missing and it'll probably come in the future is a select subject option similar to what we have inside of Lightroom. And the reason why we need a select subject and instead of these individual uh, I guess categories is because if I go with animal and people, then that should select my entire subject and that solves that problem. But if I have a select subject option, then when it's deciphering what the foreground and the background is, it can figure out where the subject is inside of that uh, focal distance, either the background or the foreground. But I don't want to rag on the stuff that I would like to see. I'm just saying that that is something. So what do we have here? the background. You can select the background and it's going to select pretty much everything except for the things that are in the foreground and then the foreground vice versa. Now, this is actually really, really good when it comes down to adding in uh, looks and LUTs. As you can see, Dan here decided to put a photo filter and he used the warm, cool gradient um, and he just moved that down. So now the water is a little bit cooler and it's a warmer mountain gives that, uh, visual aesthetic that the sun was really shining on that. And you captured the cowboy in the shadow. He also brightened up the cowboy, uh, using the foreground, um, tool. And then he just masked out or faded the overall look down here as well in the amount for the uh, photo filter by color gradient. So lots of really cool things that you can do with this new masking technology that's coming. Uh, but this, in my opinion, is not the most impressive. Now, one of the more impressive things that On One has done is this encircling tool. And the reason why I've said in the past when On One 2023 came out that we needed the AI to make these more advanced 
nuanced and complicated selections of hair and, you know, really fine tuned things. And so what they've come up with is this encircling tool, which it reimagines or reinvigorates the refine module. Now, I don't know if you've used the refine tools in on one before, but I find them not as helpful. Uh, I personally use the perfect brush to get a lot of my edge mass, if you will. Um, but I've never even tried to mess with hair in on one. If the AI mass didn't do a good job with selecting it, then I just kind of left it alone. Um, or I just accepted whatever I could get and then faded out and, you know, feathered everything. But it looks like those days might be coming to an end if this encircling tool really does work the way that it's performing here and the things that you're going to be able to do. Essentially, what you do is you paint over the area that you want to select and then you draw a circle around that area. And what on one is going to do is use its AI magic to figure out what the mask should look like. Now, we're going to and. This is what on one picked up from the mask that Dan drew here. You can see it did a really good job. Now, is it absolutely perfect? No. All right. So, you know, I'm giving on one a break here because I feel like this, you know, I don't know how masking technology actually works and things like that. Um, but I feel like this is a pretty complicated thing to do, and this gives us more flexibility in our edits than we've ever had inside of On One before. And if all you use is On One, this is going to be a huge step up to your masking and selection capabilities. Um, but it also shows that the team over at On One is really working to bring quality products and things that can be used in your photography to take it to the next level. So I'm extremely excited to try out this encircling tool uh, for those finer tuned type of details. Now, the next example here, Dan used it to uh, essentially bring back the color in this bouquet of flowers for this portrait. And, you know, if you'd like to do the color pop effect, this is going to be a great way of being able to do that because you can add or subtract from a mask using this. Now, there's some creative things that I have in my head that, you know, I think will be value added. But just remember, these are selection tools that you can use on any of the masking uh, options or m any of the masks inside of on one. And then you still have access to your blend modes and your blend options to really fine tune the way that that look comes through in your image. Lots and lots of flexibility here. Now, the next thing that I'm excited for uh, in masking is this idea of really fine tuning. Now, we just looked at the encircling tool. Well, this takes it a step further and really makes it more of a uh, what do you want to select type of tool. Now, I want to try out the encircling tool and this new paint option uh, just to see which one works the best and then how that compares with the perfect brush. Uh, one thing that I've learned with On One is as they reimagine new things, certain tools start to become outdated. So I have this concern, and I guess not really a concern, but I have this idea that if these two tools, the encircling tool and this masking brush works the way that it's being demonstrated and it works consistently, you may not need to use the perfect brush anymore. Time will tell. Uh, but here's a basic mask. This is how we would have had to mask the tree in previous uh, days. And it would give you a result that looks like this, right? Not very good because it's not cutting through where the sky is and those branches are uh, all over the place. You could go through with a brush and try to deal with this. You could try to use a refined brush. It just didn't work. Um, but now with this new mask, what you do is you paint a full circle all the way around it. And then you have to paint inside. So these are the two differences, right? Uh, the encircling brush, you leave a gap. With this paint mode, 
uh, with the harem branches selected on the refine mask, you have to paint everything in. So I'll make sure to make videos that uh, really specify that. But uh, I want to point that out now. And once you have it completely painted in like so, you have the potential of getting a mask that looks something like this. And let me zoom out. There we go. This is amazing. No, it's not absolutely perfect. But just think about all the times that you wanted to mask something like this and you would just say, nope, not even going to bother with it. Now you at least get to have a discussion and try it out to see if it works uh, because you don't have to run from it anymore. I know <laughs> there were many times that I ran from trying to mask things like this. And but now you don't have to worry about that. We'll see how it works when it comes out. I don't want to hype anybody up, uh, but this is actually pretty exciting. Now, I feel like there's more that is to come. So as on one releases more content centered around 2023.5, then I'll uh, figure if it's something that I should make content about. But these were some of the features that I was really excited for. The one that I didn't really review in today's video is the rescale AI or upscale AI and the face recovery. Uh, one, I just don't use it. Uh, I, I don't use the rescaling feature, so I don't feel like I have a leg to stand on to really share that with you other than hey, it's supposed to be better. I don't have anything to reference it from. Uh, but if you do, then please let me know in the comment section below if that's something that you're excited for uh, or you know how you plan to use that, if you even used it before to rescale photos. I, I guess it could be helpful if you're using iPhone or cell phone photography or something that had a lower megapixel count when you originally snapped the photo and then you had to crop in. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but let me know. I look forward to this new release of 2023.5 and trying it out, adding it into my photo editing uh, workflow, and we'll see how it goes. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.